Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be going over the five position support tier list for the Stockholm Major. And just like the other videos, there's a ton of heroes in the D and F tier. And actually for the five position, there's way more heroes in the F tier. And like always, I am doing this basically just on the statistics of the Stockholm Major, just going over that. And the reason why it's so bottom heavy and even top heavy is just because of the way captain's mode works. In a lot of ways, there's a lot of top heavy supports that are picked like every game. And then a lot of supports that are just not picked at all. And kind of the reverse is true a little bit in uh, in the core role is there's like only a few cores that are picked all the time or banned. And then it's a little bit more spread evenly. That's why you kind of saw the lists look a little bit different between core and support. But support, it's the same way. You have a ton of heroes that are just almost irrelevant. And then you have like five to 10 heroes that are just picked every single game. And so let's just go over, like I have in the other videos, of the F tier and the D tier really quick. Basically, all these heroes are completely irrelevant. Chen is kind of one that I think might be surprising to people. I think think this hero was picked three or four times and didn't win a single game. Um, despite the neutral creep buffs, it just didn't, you know, it, it was not a good hero. It's just not very relevant. Even though, you know, these creeps are okay, it just, uh, they were nerfed a little bit, you know, and I think Enchantress is just a better version of Chen in a lot of ways. That's why you'll see it in the S tier. But uh, it's just not very good right now for whatever reason. I'm not a huge Chen player, but, you know, the pros don't like it. It didn't win any games that it was picked, so it's obviously there. Um, Omni at one time was really good. I'm actually so surprised that Omni, I think, was only picked once or twice and lost all those games. I mean, Omni was changed and nerfed and buffed in different ways recently, but I think... Um, up until a few patches ago, I mean, I thought Omni was like high and above one of the best supports. I think on my last tier list I did, it was like in S tier. So I think it may have gotten nerfed slightly, but I don't really think it got nerfed that much. I'm just very surprised that it wasn't even tried. The thing is, I would understand if it got picked a little bit and was like, you know, terrible, but I just wasn't even tried. Maybe that's because the matchups or like the pairings like Huskar and some of these other heroes that Omni goes really well with, like that four protect one lineup kind of thing. That really wasn't what this meta was focused on. A lot of the meta was focused more on... Um, you know, mids, offlaners, these kinds of heroes like carrying the game and and you just needed a stable uh, carry that just wasn't going to die and was going to have impact, but you didn't need like the carry that was just going to 1v, you know, 5 the game. And so that's maybe why Omni wasn't as popular along with some nerfs and things like that. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say with F tier. Um, you just have your typical heroes like, you know, Witch Doctor, Warlock, these heroes are just completely irrelevant in the pros all the time. And then D tier, these heroes are just heroes that were picked up a few times but still bad win rates, um, maybe won a few games, but just completely irrelevant, basically other than a few times that it was picked, um, that these heroes were picked. So that's D and F tier. Now let's move on to the S tier heroes for the Stockholm Major. The first one, probably the obvious one that everyone understands is Pugna. Pugna is absolutely insane right now. This hero is ridiculous. It doesn't do anything crazy. It doesn't do anything like, it's not you're like stunning people, you know, you're not like, you know, doing a ton of damage to the enemy, all this kind of stuff. You're just saving your enemies or you're saving your allies from the enemy when they get gone on. Like this Decrepify is absolutely ridiculous because it's a Decrepify that you can use offensively or defensively. So there's a lot of different ways that you can like, you know, use this spell effectively where the enemy has to have a dispel or they have to buy nullifier, but it's just buying a dispel or nullifier for a five position. And then even if you get the nullifier, if you don't have like Manta, BKB, you know, um, satanic to dispel yourself, well then instead of, you know, decrepting the ally, he can just decrep you and then you can't attack anyway. So there's so many dynamic um, things to that one spell, let alone the fact that from a, the five position, he can help you push towers. The, um, the ward here is absolutely ridiculous. Even though they nerfed it a little bit, it still doesn't matter. If you take a fight in the ward, especially in the laning stage, like in the laning stage, you're doing more damage to yourself when the ward is up, which is insane. So this laning is ridiculous for this hero. Um, and then later on in the game, if you have this ward down in a fight, like you're just going to win the fight like every time almost. So the only way to really counter this hero is to not play around the ward because you don't want to spend the time to attack the ward. It dies and like six hits and it's just this stupid you know ward that sits there it's just so annoying this hero is ridiculous and then on you know in addition the other thing that's crazy about this hero is you can pair it up with like storm spirit with some of these heroes that need mana regen even heroes that you know don't have a lot of lifesteal or inbuilt regen that need to go back to base a bunch with Pugna on your team, you just never need to worry about that. You take a fight, you do something in the game where you know you use all your resources well here you have a Pugna and you just you know you 
have the Pugna near you, he just uses his ultimate on you, you're back up to full, you have full HP, you have, like, full mana almost, and the Pugna can use his ultimate on, like, a creep and get all of his health back, and then give all of that right back to you, it's just ridiculous, the amount of sustain this hero provides, and how hard it is to kill this hero with, uh, Decrepify and all these different things, it's just a ridiculous 5 position right now. Great landing stage, great survivability, great save, uh, great regen, just everything you would want from a support, except for a stun. Like, it, the only thing it doesn't have is a stun. If it had a stun, this hero would be the most broken hero in Dota, if it isn't already. Next, we have Grimstroke. Grimstroke, great 4 position, great 5 position, kind of flexed either one. Very good against Illusion Heroes, so they weren't picked much this patch. Um, they changed Inkswell recently a few patches ago to make it, you know, good like it was before, and so now it's getting picked a bunch. Um... Like I said, even in the four position video, great against mobility heroes that need mobility. Pango, really popular mid, very good against that hero. Very good to combo with heroes like Doom that were pretty popular, especially from the four position. You get that double Doom off. It's absolutely insane. Just a great overall hero um, in general. Again, we have Io, similar to the four position. This hero is similar to Pugna um, in the way that you combo it, you know, with regen. All the ways that Io is good, it's still good. It's just that now you can kind of combo with these regen heroes like Storm, like Lesh, like these other heroes that need this mana. So it's absolutely ridiculous in that way. So Io just pretty much always going to be relevant uh, in the pro meta. Snapfire. Good for all the reasons it was good in the four position video. Just a great hero all around. All the abilities can't be counted out. You have a stun repositioning. You have another stun with a shard. Good damage and wave clear. Um, tower taking and a great team fight ultimate um, to follow up with stuns. Enchantress, same thing. At, in the five position, this hero just is absolutely ridiculous. So hard to kill. Great team fighting. You will scale later into the game with your damage. Healing people up. Um, an insane amount, and you get those creeps from the jungle, even though they were nerfed a little bit, you can still get them at 8 to 10 minutes, you know, after you get some levels and just take the mid-tower, take all the towers, it's absolutely insane how fast towers die to those skeletons and those trolls and those kinds of things, this hero is ridiculous right now, Enchantress is such a good 5 position hero, we saw Enchantress and Pugna just like, you know, waste people's time so much in this major, like, these heroes would just run into the enemy side of the map, and it would be so hard to kill them, it was almost not even worth taking the time to kill them to get them out of your uh, area of the map, to get them out of your jungle. And then, lastly, in the S tier, position 4, position 5, we have Wind Ranger, and that is pretty much solely and exclusively due to Seb on OG playing Wind Ranger 5, like, every single game. I think this was, like, the only hero that he had any impact on, honestly, I mean, not that they were doing terribly, obviously they were doing okay, but they obviously lost, went down to the lower bracket, they, you know, lost a couple games, even though they won their series, and it wasn't really until, you know, they found out that, you know, Seb Windranger is absolutely ridiculous, he's getting these insane two-man shackles, he's getting his um, shard with the Gale Force and just pushing people back, until they started picking this hero, they didn't look that strong, then they started picking Windranger for Seb, like, every game, and he was just popping off, He's level 30 Wind Ranger. He's having insane impact, and they just started crushing games. I'm actually surprised that, basically, I'm surprised they didn't ban it more later on into the tournament, honestly, but I think it was because people were focusing so much on banning Amar's heroes because he was popping off a Timbersaw and uh, Razor and so many of these other heroes. They just kind of were like, eh, it's just a Wind Ranger. Let's let it through. But he was like winning every single game. It was absolutely insane to watch, um, and he was pretty much the only one playing it. So it just shows, goes to show that even though we have these tier lists and the you know the heroes that are popular, it can just evolve so much just based on player performance and what you're good at. So that's S tier. Next we have A tier. Uh, we have Keeper of the Light. Kind of fell off later into the tournament, but it's good for all the reasons that Keeper of the Light was good for the four position. You know that mana regen. Um, that you give to everybody else, you know, you, if you do end up getting your ags, you can be very, very effective, but it did fall off, it just isn't as good as it once was, um, especially with some of the nerfs, also was played more as a mid-hero, Shadow Shaman, same reason, uh, this hero is good in the forward position, it just takes Roshan and Towers and all these things, that permanent lockdown, such a good hero overall, then we have Bane here, Bane here was, you know, in this A tier, because it's here in the A tier, largely because um, it would have been S tier in previous patches, but it just didn't have a great win rate. It didn't have, um, it was picked a decent amount, banned a decent amount. It just kind of fell off a little bit compared to what it was probably in previous patches, uh, maybe a few months ago. It is still pretty relevant, but just not as relevant because we were seeing a lot of things come out that could counter Bane because it is so good and it can lock people down through BKB. It just fell off later into the tournament, but it's still good for all the, you know, same reasons Bane's good. The setup, the, uh, the Nightmare through BKB, all that kind of stuff. 
Then we have AA. I actually didn't see too much AA, but it had a good win rate overall. Like it was picked an okay amount and it had a decent win rate. Um, it just, I think it was just countering a lot of different heroes and a lot of different lineups early on in the group stage and in the tournament in general. Uh, we didn't really see it later on, but I'm not going to argue with the statistics. I'm putting it in A tier because of that. And that's kind of the same thing with Tree. Um, it's just Tree was a little bit more relevant later because it can cancel those black holes with its ultimate. So it was more relevant in that way later on to the tournament where AA kind of fell off. And I feel like people didn't really pick it very much at all in the main stage. Um, so that's A tier. And then B tier, we have Phoenix and Abaddon. These two heroes, Phoenix was largely more of a four position. And so I'm putting it down here mainly because of that. But it was still pretty relevant. Could still be pretty good. And then Abaddon was picked occasionally had some impact, not the best win rate. He wasn't picked a ton, but we saw him have some good impact in the games that he was you know, picked because of the dispel and the things that it can offer when it is a good Abaddon game. And then lastly, we have C tier here. Winter Wyvern was picked occasionally. Um, just again, not great win rate. Um, was picked probably more than some of these other heroes, but just really had a pretty bad win rate. And I think people realized that it wasn't very good and stopped picking it later on into the um, main stage and into the uh, into the tournament in general. And then Chikiro, not picked too much, just barely made it out of D tier. Undying, picked a few times, not picked very much, barely made it out of D tier. And same thing with Clockwork. These three heroes were picked occasionally, just barely above D tier, probably because they were picked a few more times and had an okay win rate, but just not great overall. So that is my five position support tier list for the Stockholm Major. Um, as always, guys, let me know what you think. If heroes should be higher, lower, maybe off the list in general, whatever um, you think based on what you are watching. And as always, guys, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things. Join the Discord with the link below. Um, if you want to request replay reviews or other things like that, just interact with me in general. Join the Patreon. Go there if you want coaching or you just want to see more videos like this in general into the future and you want to support me doing that as well. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.